Hi, I'm Emily Taylor. This is the second video um, tutorial about the cup of tea pattern. So you can see the cup of tea finished quilt is behind me and I've got another quilt that I'm gonna get started on right here and I wanna walk through that. So I've actually decided that I'm gonna work on this little teacup right here. Here's my fabric and remember we talked in the last video in case you um, haven't seen that, I recommend going back through that video because I talk about fabric selection and the supplies that you need and then preparing your fabric with light steam seam too. That's what we're using for this project. So each of these pieces of fabric, I like to cut them at about this, this size and then you can see that they've been prepared with the steam seam on the back. Um, and so I've got all of the fabric that I'm gonna use for this teacup, I've decided to make it red. And I want to show you that I've kind of got the spectrum here. Amelia, can you tilt it so they can see the... <laughs> okay, can you see that? Okay, so I we've got... Get close. Yeah, get close. Okay, see, we've go, we go from light to the mid-tones really nice and bright all the way to the darker colors. Um, and then I also wanted to say, so I'm gonna demonstrate how to make one of the dishes using this method. Um, you will notice that in the design, the plate is behind this teacup. So if you wanna start with the plate, be my guest. Um, if you want to leave the middle of the plate white, that will be okay too. And then one other thing I wanna point out is kind of have, you know, I want you to have all of your fabric selected before you get started. Um, and another thing that would be really fun too is if you want to fussy cut a few pieces, have that fabric ready as well. I'm not going to do that today on mine, but just know that that's an option to, to add some detailing on your dishes. So uh, let's just dig in. So I'm, I, you can see, um, I'm going to start, we're going to figure that it's going to be kind of like this. Um, with a light store a light source maybe coming from up above and then I'm going to create shadows the further down the dish um, That I go so I'm going to start with my lighter pieces and Generally, I tend to cut my pieces in a triangular shape that maybe have a rounded edge and then if I want to I'll kind of round them out a little bit more I make sure that all of the if there are any threads to cut those threads and then I take a pin. I'm gonna score that paper and it will peel off really easily, exposing the steam -a seam that sticky surface. So this is gonna be the temporary adhes adhesion uh, for this project. And I'm just gonna just kind of dig right in. Now one thing I wanna point out too is I'm going to, one of the reasons I like using the steam -a seam and it's light steam -a seam too, remember. The one reason, one of the reasons that I love using it is because if I, it doesn't matter how I layer things. So if I layer this and I need to tuck something behind it, I just take a pin, pull it back and put something underneath it. It's really, really easy to use. So. I'm just going to work here and you are going to watch me until I get this cup finished. So I hope you don't get bored out of your mind. Peace. Sometimes when you score it, the um, scoring will pull a thread off the edge. Make sure that you trim those. And this is actually kind of a straight edge, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that edge straight. You can see the sizes that I'm that I'm cutting are they're you know compared to my hand less than the palm of my hand. And this just the reason I do that size is it allows me to add multiple designs. I think the more fabric that I can add into this project, the more interesting it's going to be. <coughs> now, let me also make sure that you understand, we wanna make sure that every, all the gray area of the foundation panel is entirely covered. 
we don't so we're going to overlap all of our pieces see how that is quite a bit darker than that one above it so i'm going to overlap that right there and this is i'm just going to keep working and now it's a little bit like a puzzle so i will just be making these pieces fit in the gray area that i'm working on so like a puzzle um, making them fit but i can cheat because they can overlap So this is a really, it's such a fun thing. I can just sit up here for hours and hours. I love doing this and I listen to a good book while I'm working and just enjoy some creative time. And um, so the book that I most recently finished, I highly recommend it is Melinda Gates' new book called Moment of Lift. And it's about empowering women throughout the world to benefit all of society. It's very uplifting. It's a great, great book. She's a hero of mine. She and, and Bill Gates, her husband, do an amazing amount of good in the world. And I want to be like that. Now, if you have any questions, um, remember that you can always find me on uh, in the collage quilt along with Emily Facebook group you can post a question there or direct message me um, you can also email me anytime Emily at collage quilter .com. and this pattern as well as any of my other patterns are available at collage quilter .com. So I'll talk a little bit more about maybe some of the social media that I have so you can check out my social media. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, of course. Collage Quilter is my page. I also run a group called Collage Quilter. And then the group where I really interact with people and we work on the projects together is Collage Quilt along with Emily. Um, then on Instagram, I can be found at collage.quilter. You can see uh, a lot of work in progress there. And I do lots of tutorials uh, that can be found on my YouTube channel. You might be watching this on YouTube right now. That's the Collage Quilter YouTube channel. And on my, on my website, I also have tutorials I have all my products for sale and I have my events calendar. So I have begun teaching actually all over the country. I'm leaving tomorrow to go to um, Florida, Daytona Beach. Can't wait because I'm looking forward to some sunshine. It's been a snowy cold winter here in Utah. It's been great because I'm a skier, but come you know, as it gets close to March, everybody's ready to get out of here and ready for some sunshine. And so that's me. So then following, you can see sometimes what I'll do is just kind of see if my, if my piece is going to work. If it works, great. If not, I'll trim it. Um, anyway, following Florida, next week I'll be in Indiana at the Indiana Heritage Quilt Show. Now you can see right here there's a little bit of an edge. If that bothers you, just trim it. The piece underneath it but I don't worry too much about about that now let's add some more of this let's see here so as I'm going you can kind of see that I'm 
selecting, I'm just kind of working with this assortment of fabric. And let me see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, eight, nine. It looks like I have 10, 10 different pieces of fabric. And again, I love the variety. I think that makes for a much more interesting quilt. So the more variety you can add, the better. Um, but you could probably get away with four to six different pieces of fabric. But I think it's interesting to add more. Let's see here. Okay, so you see how I'm just kind of filling in all the gray areas. Um, I'm gonna show you how I would handle that area right now. I'm simply going to cut something that has some rounded edges and just make it fit. And again, I'm not super particular. I want it to overlap, so I don't care if it's a little bit larger than the gray. Let's see, I'll move it right there. Perfect. And I'll just continue working in this, in this way. See how this is going? So I'm gonna have this done pretty quick here. Add some more of this. Let's see. One thing about the um, the steam seam that I want to that I want to point out, this piece that I just cut has not been pressed on the back. I have not pressed this, so all this is is the fabric, the wrong side of the fabric pressed down to the sticky side of the steam seam, and sometimes it won't have quite, it just won't work. So you need to touch it with a light iron. So if you find that your steam seam is not sticking to your fabric, just press that back side and it will, it will stick. Okay, coming along, huh? Now I tend to really like the choppy, artistic, um, what I call uh, impressionist method of collage. That's exactly what I'm showing you right here. The pieces are roughly the same size. They're quite random in their shape and there is some randomness in their size. So as you can see, as I'm working, I will kind of get some little scraps that need to be cleaned up. I don't save those. Just, there's another little edge that I think I'll trim. Okay, so we're getting really close. Might as well finish it, right? Right, Amelia? Right. Right, everyone? <laughs> okay, let's see here. Let's what do I want right there? I want a little bit of this. I love working with color because, you know, you can say red and there are so many variations of red and so many variations of blue. And it's really fun for me to dive into one color and explore the temperature of that color and the value of that color. Temperature, of course, means warm or cool. As I explained in the last video, value means dark or light. You know, so value, you can really easy, easily see this one's dark, this one's light. So I love to, I love to play with um, different values as I'm working. So 
So when I get this to a point where I'm happy with it, um, and it's getting there really fast, I mean, this is just super, super simple, um, I will probably not press it until the surrounding areas have been collaged. Because again, just a reminder, I want to be able to um, tuck fabric that needs to go underneath some parts of it. So I'm gonna round this out right now and give you an example. Okay, so there's a little shaded section. And I want that to look like it's behind. So I'm gonna take my pin and just pull the, the piece that's in front that's supposed to be on top right there. Now I try and use up all my all my scraps. So if I have pieces that are smaller than other pieces, I'm going to finish using all of these small pieces so that I can not have to save them. I wish I could take questions right now. <laughs> so don't forget to email me if you have questions. Or leave them in the comments. Oh yeah, leave them in the comments. Great idea, Amelia. You're so smart. I've got this smart little girl back there. Actually, I have two smart little girls. Both of my daughters are here right now with me in my studio. But one of them is better than the other. <laughs> Amelia, Amelia, one of them is a big fat punk. She needs a spanking. My 22-year-old daughter needs a spanking because she's a punk. <laughs> Amelia. Okay, let's see. Should we just keep working? Get this whole piece done? Or are you bored out of your mind? I think I'll just keep working. Are you asking them or are you asking me? Well, I don't know. I'm bored. You're bored? But I'm sure your quilter friends will find this riveting. Sure. You're being sarcastic, Amelia. I can tell. I can tell. You're such a punk. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get you so good. In front of all the quilter crowd, your mom is going to spank your bum. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> We believe in spanking, don't we? No. Yes. What? You talk as if I'm a, an abuser. Come on, Amelia. Who's the best mom in the world? Just say it. Just say it. Mm. <laughs> you want to come help me finish this up? Sure. Sure you do. Get over here. We're almost done. <laughs> Hi guys, it's me, Amelia. I'm my mom's favorite daughter. And She's the troublemaker. Oh, I'm not in it. I'm Amelia. I'm going to help her finish this up really quick. I'm her favorite daughter. And here we go. Amelia's the punk. I need some scissors. Grab yourself some scissors. These ones? Sure. She knows to ask which scissors to use, doesn't she? Yeah. That much she knows about collage quilting. How much more beyond that she knows? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Now when it comes to a little piece like this, what I normally do is say, okay, I think it's somewhat square. It's not triangular. So I'll cut out a square that I know is larger than that. Is that too light? No, I think that's okay. And I'll just kind of shape it to make it fit. Ta-da, really easy. It's so fun. Don't you love making collage quilts? I love it. 
Get out of here. <laughs> Keep it up. We're almost done. We're almost done with this teacup. And it's so cute. Caroline, what do you think? Super cute. Caroline Super doesn't cute. have an opinion. Well, that's a cute little guy right there. Oh, I was going to put this right there. Well, that's okay. You go ahead. I'll yes, just shape this I out. I will just go ahead. I'll just make this fit right there. Okay, folks, we're coming in on the... Oh! <laughs> I don't know why I put up with that. I don't have to put up with that. I think I think we're done. I think oh you need you're doing that one last piece right there? Yeah. Okay. What should I do? Right there? Yeah, I know, but which fabric? Um this I one? like that bright red one. Which bright red? This one. And I will do that last little this one. Caroline, you wanna share what you've been working on? No. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, I think we're about done. See, isn't using the steam seam like super easy and fun? It's kind of a new thing. I like it. Okay, bam. We got one teacup done. And that was pretty quick, right? So kind of just, you're gonna use that same technique with each element of the quilt, okay? but. Every gray tone is gonna to represent an, a high enough contrast so that you can tell what you're looking at. So I've chosen red here, I'm gonna do yellow there, I'm gonna do blue down here, and I'll do some sort of a mix of th those things here. Remember, mine is going to be kind of French looking, so red and yellow and blue. Once I get the whole design collaged, what I did with this one is I cut away all of the white area around the collage and I simply adhere it to a pieced background. So on this one you can see that I pieced I think four and a half, uh, four and a half five inch squares in the, the palette that I wanted, laid that out and then I put my collage right on top and the way I secured that to it was I put a thin bead of fabric fusion around the entire the, the back side of the collaged piece and then press it down um, and then quilt it so there we go I'll, I'll walk through some more we'll probably do another final video um, or do a live video in the Facebook group to answer any questions you have about finishing the quilt so I hope this is helpful again I want to hear from you if it wasn't if you have any questions and good luck with your project okay thanks bye bye